Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about interviews. We will talk a little bit about prelim, transitional, internal med interviews, but we'll mostly focus on dermatology interviews, what questions are likely to be asked, how to approach the questions, and really what to expect. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, welcome to my channel. I am a dermatology resident and my channel is for anyone who's currently thinking about or currently training in medicine. I give advice based on my own life experiences. If this sounds like something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to my channel now. Okay, so let's get started. So I did dual apply, which is why I know what it's like to interview um, with internal medicine. And then of course, if you're applying for dermatology, you'll also be applying to, to prelim and or transitional year programs. So I'm just going to first just um, say what's the difference between the interviews. I thought that the internal med and transitional and prelim ER interviews were much more general. They were much, um, they were much shorter. I really only interviewed with about two to three faculty members for any of them, and they asked a lot about a lot more general questions. I would say with the prelim and transitional year interviews, they were a lot more conversational. They really just asked about myself, maybe why I was interested in dermatology, but they were much more laid back. It almost felt like I already got in, and it was just more of a conversation. Dermatology interviews are a lot more. I guess I would say. I don't know. All interviews are serious, right? But I would say that they're maybe a little bit more intimidating is the word. Um, there was no standard dermatology interview. A lot of them were different, but the most common factor of the interview was that you interviewed with many, if not all of the faculty members in the program. And therefore it was really a long day, multiple sessions of interviewing with people. There are different ways it could have been done. It was either with a panel of a few attending physicians interviewing you or multiple individual interviews with the faculty members and of course the residents. I never had a panel where I sat across multiple attendings or residents um, and they're asking me questions and I'm answering back. I only ever had the individual, the individual interviews, uh, just multiple sessions of them. I interviewed at 14 dermatology programs. So I would say just based on my experience that more than likely your interview would po possibly be just the multiple sessions with different faculty members. However, with the virtual sessions, I don't know how programs will do it. There's no standard way that dermatology programs are, have decided to do it. Each program is going to take their own different route, but that's how it has been in the past. In addition to the multiple sessions, another reason that the dermatology interviews felt a lot more stressful is because um, some programs had interviewers that took on like different personas. There would be the interviewer who was scary and, and asked you like intimidating questions. There would be the interviewer who just seemed super bored by you. I had an interviewer just like yawned multiple times throughout my interview. And at first I thought it was me, but then multiple of um, the people that I interviewed with told me that they experienced the same thing. I had several interviewers who were just expressionless. Like when you try to talk to them and try to fill them out, you got nothing. So expect that on your interview day as well, where you will have completely different personalities and sometimes they will feel like it's to intimidate you. Just stay true to yourself and just be confident in, with yourself and it should be okay. Despite COVID making everything virtual, the bottom line with any interview is for the program to get to know you. So no matter what, you answer every question so that they can understand who you are as a person. So the best way to approach any interview question is by practicing. You want to be authentic, but prepared. But what I did in my preparation was that I actually thought of several different stories of my life that would answer certain questions, that would answer um, the um, most common questions about like, you know, a time that I failed, a time that um, I'm most proud of, a challenging experience that I've had, a time I had to work in a team, just all those kind of different questions. I had a story ready to go that would show different characteristics of myself. Having these stories are just a great way because a lot of times they ask questions the same questions but just in a different way or in a unique creative way and once you have those stories you're completely prepared and i've said it in my last uh, video check that out um, about virtual interviewing where you want to pause before you answer any question even though you rehearse it you want to sound a little bit more authentic and you want to sound like you're thinking about it a little bit and then just answer the question so let's get a little bit more into 
the question. If I don't cover something and you guys want to know more about it, just leave me a comment and I will be sure to get back to you. I answer all comments on my channel. Okay, so the first group of questions is, the about yourself questions and of course it's the tell me about yourself so when i answered those questions i did start from childhood and i went all the way up until where i was at in medical school and i picked out key stories of my life that i thought wanted the interviewer to know about myself and i had characteristics that i wanted the interview to know about myself and i put i wove it into that story and um that is probably the hardest question so i did practice on it a lot but no matter what you don't want your questions to be long because the interviewer will get bored so i did not i tried to make sure none of my answers were longer than two minutes other ways that they might ask it a little bit more creatively is tell me how your friends will describe you pick three characteristics about yourself or even you could go ahead and ask your friends and um, have stories about those characteristics that will exemplify that so that the, you have that in your um, pocket of stories for if you're asked that question. Then there's the even more creative ways where is if you were a candy, tell me what kind of candy you are. If you were a cookie, tell me what kind of cookie you would be. If you were a superhero, tell me what kind of superhero you would be. And I was asked a whole bunch of variations um, along with what I just said. And all of those questions are really to try to get to know you better. If you have the characteristics that you want the interviewer to know about, those questions will be relatively easy because then you could just be creative and pick a candy, pick a cookie, pick a superhero and use the characteristics that you want them to know about you and, and say why that, that candy, cookie or superhero exemplifies those characteristics that you have. Another question they're going to ask you is about teamwork. They love those questions. One of them will be, tell me about a difficult time that you that you had while working in a team, or tell me about a time that you've had to deal with conflict. Um, and then when you tell your story, do not leave it at just the conflict or the problem. Make sure that you talk about how you've grown and how you overcome those challenges. So key words that I used in my own interview was saying that, you know, even though you're working in a team and you're coming across a difficult situation that you remain open-minded understand that people come from different perspectives and that you all want to have the, and you all want the same end goal and prioritizing that angle and seeing how best you can all come together to reach that goal the teamwork question really is to be able to tell how you're how you're able to work with others. So you want to make sure that you can highlight that even if they're asking when was when was a difficult time or a challenging time. The point of that is to highlight your strengths in dealing in with working in difficult situations. The next topic is failures. I used um, a story about a patient-centered scenario where I had not adequately listened to a patient and it did affect patient care, but how I overcame that. When you talk about a time that you failed, you do not just leave it at the time that you failed. Make sure that you also talk about, you know, how you grew from it, what you learned from it, how you would go about that moving forward. They ask you about a time you failed. What they're looking for is to see if you're flexible, adaptable, open to criticism, open to just failing because we're human, we are going to fail and of course open to growing. So you wanna just make sure that you touch on those points when you're asked questions such as that. The next obvious one is that they will ask you about your academics, they will ask you about red flags, they will also ask you about the projects that you've worked on. Definitely know your projects. I mean, those are just easy questions that you can be asked. One question that I kind of was thrown off on, um, but I was happy to answer was what was your favorite research project? I never expected someone to ask me which was my favorite I did have a favorite and I told them that my favorite was mainly because it was the pro it was the project in which I came up with the question came up with the study design and a topic that I always was interested in prior to medicine and a topic that my friends and family more understood so that I can even explain it to them because it's a, it's one thing when you work on projects that really the science world only gets but it's another thing when you work on projects that your family and friends get excited about as well. So that was the project that I discussed but you guys will have your own things that make you excited and just be honest about that as well. They might even ask why you picked a research project and I thought that was a tough question because a lot of times we pick like research projects because that was the only thing that was offered to us by an attending, right? There was one um, research project that I was working on, which is a topic I was very weak in. And I would just say, you know, this is a topic that I'm very weak and I never really had any exposure to. So it was a great opportunity for me to learn more about the topic, which was true. Then they will ask you questions about knowledge of their program. So make sure you do research on the program. Make sure you know, you, you can figure out why you could fit into the program because they'll definitely ask why us. 
even though dermatology is super competitive and uh, a lot of us are like, I'll go anywhere, at the end of the day, you still have to answer the why that program. So do your research. And another question that they're most likely to ask you is uh, about dermatology. And they can ask you a range of questions of dermatology. Why dermatology? What do you think is a problem in dermatology that you think that should be addressed? If not dermatology, what what fields would you have picked? And what your specific interests are in dermatology? Answer those questions truthfully. Definitely say, you know, um, I, I'm hoping to learn much more about the field of dermatology when I start my residency program. This is what I think I might be interested in, but I'm very open-minded to learn about all the fields in dermatology because I know it's such a vast field. I mean, it's not a big deal what you're interested in. The only thing I would say is don't say cosmetics. Oh, and one more thing about the program that I forgot to say is that they are likely to ask you also why their city. I remember going out into all the way on the West Coast where I've never stepped foot in and they'll be like, why this city and you got to be able to answer that the thing with me is though I did interview mostly in main cities and I use that as a reason for main cities more likely to have diversity in um in dermatology have more um, variation in cases um and then also highlight different things about the program in itself and just saying you know I'm more interested in becoming um, well-trained rather than anything. So if I have to travel far, that's completely fine with me. But they will ask you that. And sometimes I'm like, hello, I just want to get into a Durham program. I'll be in any city. <laughs> but um, they'll ask you that. Just be ready to answer that as well. And like I said, the questions that they'll ask you are so various. Of course, they're going to ask you stuff about your hobbies and all that stuff. But those are the questions that I really wanted to just focus on. And last but not least, Make sure that um, when they ask you if you have questions, that you have questions. They want to see that you're interested in their program and you want to get to know their program. And also, this is the opportunity for you to learn about the program as well, just as much as it is for them to learn about you. If you have any questions about what I talked about today, please leave a comment. If this was helpful to you in any way, press that like button. And if, if you want to keep up to date with all my videos, make sure to press that subscribe button. All right, I'll see you guys at the next video. Bye.